the american dream we have all heard about this but today we want to talk about the indian dream about the hustle of a billion people from all across india remote villages smaller towns cities all chasing a better life for themselves and their families they are not bogged down by their circumstances their family backgrounds or lack of resources they are driven by their dreams the constant quest to do better for the communities around them this my dear friends is the indian dream and it's been in making for decades now quietly one such dream was seen by a man from a small village in karnataka Hi everyone this is Vijay Gumani welcome to the debut uh, episode of Sunday Money show uh, today we have esteemed personality in the world of indian finance mr brahmanand hegde sir who is a founder and a uh, chairman of uh, vistar finance uh, with us uh, good morning sir actually Thank you. this is our this is the first uh, interview which i am conducting in this uh, sunday money show this is going to be the what we can say interaction between farmer son farmer son to a farmer son sir our uh, audience would like to understand more from you how you started your life in a small rural place called sirsi then how was your initial days about your personal background about your education being a farmer son how you got into entrepreneurship as a journey these are the things our audience would like to understand from you sir yeah thank you i think vijay i was born in a very very small village uh, Our village had only just nine houses. I was born in a joint family. Out of the eight brothers, I was the youngest among them. And being born in a village, about 60 years back, kind of infrastructure we had. There was no electricity in my villages. It was extremely difficult to get anything to know about outside market. But fortunately for me, my father was forward-looking. He was a freedom fighter himself, and he had a lot of focus for education. while some of my elder brothers could not get into education higher education because of the condition in which we were born and brought up but younger generation among us me my some of my brothers were able to go out and get graduated and of course the exposure being limited whatever was somebody else did if there are examples we took it and i went to agriculture college in dharwad and the subsequently post graduation agriculture from us bangalore and that's how my life started from a agricultural background how you got into finance yeah i think uh, there are limited choices when you are graduating from the college at that time right being from a small uh, family and background only thing was to get some job and the only two opportunities at that time we had was one getting into agriculture department which was state government uh, related entity second was some of the public sector banks were recruiting agriculture finance officers to manage their agriculture loan portfolio So I was fortunate enough to write the BSRB exam and got selected in a western group and that's how I got into banking as a career. Sir after graduation I think you joined uh, Bank of Maharashtra then your journey started in uh, ICICI bank and you were part of uh, senior position in the uh, Platron India as well then you started Vistar right like would like to understand your entire journey in the financial sector. In fact my career in the bank Bank of Maharashtra started off extremely well. In fact, I used to just love going to the villages, meeting the farmers. But having said that, because I was traveling every day about 100 kilometers in a motorcycle, my health got into problems because traveling in a motorcycle daily 100 kilometers was very challenging. That is when I started looking out. Thanks to my wife's uh, insights into the daily, she was looking for a opportunity in some newspapers. She gave the lead of ICICI Limited looking for. to agriculture graduates to run the program so that's how i moved from bank of maharashtra to icici icici group of course was a great opportunity for me in terms of improving my thinking beyond the narrow range of farmer financing which i used to do in bank of maharashtra get into corporate side and also i was implementing a very interesting program for usa right and that program implementation also led to ICIC group starting a rural financing team and making me responsible to implement their program okay. and i built a very large 
and very innovative business model in ICICI and that gave me a strength and confidence that I could do it in a larger scale given the opportunity. <clears throat> Fullerton in 2007 were looking for starting their large rural business uh, in India. They are looking for the right person to drive it. So they reached out to me. I thought it may be a good opportunity for me to change uh, from ICICI group to Fullerton so then I get to do something different and also to do something which is closer to my heart of rural financing. We implemented a very innovative program in Fullerton. In fact, the program was highly successful. It's just that unfortunate that 2008 crisis led to Fullerton decision changing for India. That is why my thought came and one of me and my partner, co-founder co who is part in the Vistar, one of the days we were discussing is if there is an excess to finance or a capital, we could do on our own. Okay. And that decision just took us five minutes to decide on starting Vistar. Okay. okay. And of course, obviously we need a capital. We reached out to the investors who could be potential investors into business model like what we started talking about in MSME. We were fortunate enough to get interest from three different investors up front. And we had to make a choice out of three who, who are the one or two guys who go with it. Right. And we made a choice and we went with a couple of investors to start with. Right. Sir, here I have one more uh, related question, I, what I can say. Uh, being into a corporate uh, journey, getting a salary on a monthly basis for a very long time, like I think you served ICICI, Bulletron, Bank of Maharashtra for almost two and a half to two and a half decades, then you will have like family constraint. Every month you will have your own commitments and all. Then how did you took that entrepreneurship journey? Because most of the people face because we have a lot of audience who will be watching this who are trying to become an entrepreneur or they are already started their journey into entrepreneurship. In that way, like want to understand from you. I think it's a very good question. See the. We sometimes underestimate the ability of a rural uh, uh, people, right? Right. Very nature, because you are born and brought up in a rural location, we are used to taking higher risk. Right. right. But what happens is that when you are in a comfortable position, in a salaried, good salaried job, your willingness to take that risk goes down. But for me, for me from day one, I was always open to take some experimental approach in my life. That is one of the reasons why while many of my classmates joined the job, retired in the same job, I took a path of changing the, let's say, trajectory and taking two or three different jobs doing the career itself. And my always thinking is, if the worst thing, what could happen if I fail? If I'm able to cover that part and if I say that I still can live, a, I would say, at least a reasonable life, then of course it's a... For me, the decision took five minutes more because one, my mindset was to take a risk one and second my ability to think uh, differently and say not follow just traditional approach of going through one route also helped me to think on those lines. So for me at that time of course my daughters were in a engineering college. I had to see that my wife uh, and children are not put into any difficulties and still I pursue my personal passion of starting on my own and driving a of course growth going forward uh, was something which I did it and by God's grace it worked out well for me. Having said that, I did face enough challenges in the journey of Vistar. I think just to give you a few examples, within six months of starting Vistar, there was a crisis of microfinance sector in Andhra, which led to all banks taking a very defensive view, not trying to take exposure to startup companies like Vistar. So basically without funding from banks, there was no way we could leverage our equity. So that is, I think, a difficult period. 2016, there was a demonetization, which led to customers' cash flow getting badly impacted, customers finding it difficult to pay, uh, NP and NPS mounting banks. A lot of NPS is lost hugely during that time. Then we sometimes underestimate the challenges of liability for NPSs. So we have to raise debt from the banks. When ILFS crisis and DHFL crisis came in the market, 2017, 18, 19, 
we had to face a lot of challenges in raising debt. We were able to raise debt and of course still run it through a difficult, difficult period. Then of course COVID came in 2020 and 21. That again led to customers' business getting closed down, customers finding it difficult to repay the loan. We had to go through this challenge. But what I think the confidence of one, our own ability to manage such crisis, one. Second, we built the organization for a long term, so we didn't took any shortcuts. We always looked at best uh, risk management practice in the company, what we need to put in place, best team, best processes. All those things have helped us as a company to come out of this, those challenges and still be successful. That is how we were able to get a, one of the well-known, globally well-known private equity investor and coming and in, investing in the company and taking over the company management. Right. Sir, this question is specifically for who is going to start the business or who are in the verge of starting a business as an entrepreneurship journey. Like 2008 was, as you know, like it was a big crash. Then you started in 2010, though like even dust would have that not settled at that point in time. So like somebody starting a new business, like what is your suggestion on like taking up a good steps or a conservative steps or how he, they have to start their journey to uh, to an entrepreneurship journey. 2010, the Indian startup ecosystem was not what we see currently. Right. To the extent that there are very few startups. Right. So access to few resources, Capital. what we need to get mm. to start a company was mm. very limited. Right. Because any company, when you want to start, obviously you need first is the capital. Right. Right. When I say capital, there are two types of capital. One is the equity capital. Second is also being in a financial services, NBFC, the debt yeah, side. Debt side. So that was definitely a big challenge. Right. I like come to it in terms of how you address it. Mm. Second is, it is not easy to attract a right talent for a startup companies. Yeah? Right. And because you know everybody wants a comfortable job, secure job. Startups, you are not sure whether the company will survive, whether they will pay my salaries. Who will come and join you? Because sometimes you may have to take somebody who is left over in the market. Right. Uh, that will not help you as a company. And, that, that and way back in 2010, even it was very, very tough. Now very, 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 some, very, difficult, yeah. very difficult. Third thing is, of course, we need to really get into right technology platform mm -hmm. without which your ability to scale up becomes a challenge. Oh, okay. And at the same time, acquiring a very high quality technology platform is challenging because ability to invest higher, larger On capital becomes an issue, right? right? So that's the third thing. Fourth, of course, while doing so, you have to ensure that you build an organization for a long term, means your ability to manage processes and risk management, both have to be very good, okay? I will come to the all four in a little more detail. Yeah. Capital, fortunately for us, the equity side, because of the background of the founders, me and my partner, mm -hmm and the track record we built in the earlier ma uh, market, in the earlier organizations, right. helped us to attract capital because they were interested in founders who have this kind of a capability. So that, you know, the chances of success of such venture is very high. Right. So when we reached out to them with a business model, they were really delighted to put in money, of course with some terms and conditions what typically right. investors put in, but to the extent that equity capital was relatively easier option for us to raise because of our own background and tax record, what we built. That is right. one part. Debt, I will come to it later because only when you start the company, it comes in. Yeah. Second, people. Fortunately, both me and my partner, we had 25 plus years of experience in the market. Mm. We have our own team track record in the early organization. Early organization. The people's trust level in both me and my partner was quite high. Right. Because of which, we were able to attract high quality talent, though few of them initially, as a part of this. Yeah, obviously, we have to see that they are compensated appropriately in terms of sweat equity, all those things, which we did it. Right. Because salary, we had a limitation of what we could give. Right. So, we are able to attract uh, SRM. Third, of course, when it came to technology, we know that our problem was how much we could invest, right? We, know, we were knowing which kind of platform will work well for as an NBFC. NBFC. That understanding was there because we also came from a financial background. Correct. But ability to invest was a limit, uh, limitation. So what we thought is that it is not possible for us to do from day one everything what we want to do. We took the first step of adopting a technology which will at least help us to start off in the initial scale 
then it take it us for two or three years. Right. We had to keep our investment to a minimum. That's one of three. Understood. Fourth, because again, managing a large business in banking and NBFCs, financial services, we had a very good exposure. Specifically, I came from a banking background. Right. I was able to think of risk, think of processes from day one, and put some of the SOPs in place from day one. Uh-huh. Because it is important to build that culture in the company if you are to build a scale in the long run. Right. Otherwise, you know, you will end up building a small boutique company which investors will not be interested in putting more money. Right. So all these four were debt side. Obviously, it is a question of your own reputation in the market. Second, your own company's rating. Company right. being small, there was no rating. Right. But fortunately for me, my own reputation in the market helped me to reach out to smaller banks, smaller NBFCs, who okay, were able to understand, yeah. and my personal reputation being at stake, they were able to give me smaller funding, Understood. and that helped us to take the initial journey up, and we are able to go yeah. it gradually. Understood, sir. Uh, we would like to understand more as a Vistar Finance, and second thing is like. What was the real problem uh, statement which you were trying to solve in 2010? MSME was always a large opportunity because India being more rural, semi-urban kind of market, right? right. MSME opportunities are always very large, right? Right. However, the challenge of funding for MSME was high because most of these MSMEs used to deal in cash. Okay. They buy in cash, sell in cash. There was no trail of transaction which bankers could use it to fund a customer. Correct. Okay. That is how the Vistar came in. Okay. We came out with a very unique credit methodology wherein each sector was studied in detail okay. to find out what are the nuances of the sector, risks in the sector, mm-hmm. and we developed templates so that you know we can help the credit manager to evaluate customer based on these templates type structure. Understood. Just to give you an example, for example, uh, let's say power loan customer. Understood. He runs power loans for a long period of time, okay. but he doesn't maintain any of the cash flows in banking system. Correct. When we developed a template, we looked mm-hmm. at what kind of power loan he is using, what mm-hmm. kind of product he is making, what is the productivity per day or a per month or per week depending upon the shifts what he does, Understood. and able to say if he owns a power loan of X type for he runs it two two shifts in a let's say day, and, uh, he can make so much cash flow. Okay. And that, of course, counter check with the people in the value chain, like master viewers. Okay. And this kind of a templates helped our credit manager to evaluate the customer, and we were able to solve the problem. Okay. There are many successful stories we were able to see in front of our eyes by funding to MSMEs because right. the entrepreneurial spirit of this MSME customer is very high. Right. Just an access to right resources, right mm-hmm. funding, sometimes maybe right market makes mm-hmm. them. Very uh, flourishing. Right. One of the great example I can give you is a small street side ready-made cloth vendor. Mm-hmm. He was part of basically North Karnataka. Okay. He used to be he's been in the business for 10-15 years, but mm-hmm. with the limited resources, his ability to expand was limited. Okay. When he came to know the Vistar is funding, he reached out to us. We could assess his cash flows. We could fund him about two lakh rupees. Okay. And taking that money, he went and purchased. The ready-made garments from Bombay wholesale market, okay. and came back to sold in the villages which he was operating between Ganesh festival to the Diwali, okay. two months period, and he was able to sell entire quantity of garments he purchased out of the loan, right, and able to make about sixty seventy thousand of his profit. Profit. When I visited the branch, it was gratifying to see that the customer had come to meet me with a bike which he bought out of the profit what he made. And naming the bike as Vista, okay. I think there is no more, not more satisfying than this anywhere we could think of being correct, correct. if we are a funder. Right. Because there are many such great examples we could see. I think that is what will make you satisfying by doing a business if you are able to make create this kind of happy customers. Right. It takes you for a long. Right, sir. How could you make Vista as a sustainable uh, and a profitable business model, being lot of challenges in this SME? Or MSME sector. Any business, for example, if you see, there are three, four things we should be conscious of. Okay. One is what is the unit cost productivity. Means if I am investing some amount, what is the productivity I am going to get? Right. Means because here the biggest cost is people cost. Right. When you have a team in branches which are going to source the loan, we should ensure that they are able to give you minimum productivity 
so the okay. business model is profitable second is risk management because any business will differently have some risk it is not that every customer home fund will be able to pay you back well right so we have to account for that losses but having said that in this how even after accounting these losses okay we have enough margin so that we are able to give a return to the investors right okay so to the extent that there is a risk management right third is right pricing uh -huh. because if you price it inappropriately either low or high okay if you price it low maybe we will be able, able to attract more customers but it is not sustainable right for you right okay and having said that we have to price it appropriately so that we don't make too much of profit right so the pricing was third thing fourth was this is a running business we cannot afford to stop business uh, any in between means right. if one month if we don't have resources to fund okay then obviously the you market goes in the market uh, news goes in the market so right. this company doesn't have money to fund correct we should avoid that situation so your liability management means your ability to raise resources in the bank of a light tenure and right at right cost is very important very very important so all these four things have to be managed well so that we are able to keep the model sustainable correct and deliver a reasonably sustainable roa uh -huh. so that you know investors are interested in to put more money into the company and it's very well sir now you are part of many nbfcs or sme msme uh, as a mentor you are doing lot of other work after exiting from the vistar finance then what really uh, do you think in 2010 what was the biggest uh, what we can say uh, differentiator between 2010 to 2023 because capital access is currently is relatively better if you look at today in 2010 it was a different story i think uh, uh, startup ecosystem yeah in 2010 was at a early stage right yes. there was no culture of investing yeah, correct even the venture capitalists were very choosy so to the extent that it was not easy to start if a entrepreneur has a good idea right but access to capital being limited his ability to start was very constraining right, right. but one very good thing happened in indian market is over a period of time two three things happened one there is large number of new generation kind of entrepreneurs right. came to the market with a hunger to succeed so that is one thing entrepreneur ecosystem is i think one important right second at the same time large number of hnis or professional hnis who made money through the shops in larger companies like let's say infosys or wipro yeah tcs yeah. kind of companies they were uh, in money and they were ready to experiment with that earnings right percentage Which, uh, of allocation they yeah, were also fact, yeah uh, they all came from a typical middle class kind of background okay. right their uh, ex uh, requirements were limited they were ready to experiment with some of the additional money with that right which was not the case with traditional indian businesses they were not very ready to experiment to start with right. now of course they are also coming into the market right so that was a second ecosystem third is enabling environment by the government mm -hmm. see a lot of clarity came in the last 5 to 10 years mm -hmm. the government in terms of policies how the government will look at investments into the startups if there is right. a failure how they write it off right all kind of things right, right. that clarity made thing and of course exposure a market opportunity also start growing because india being a technology hub right globally we are now recognized as another technology hub so right. obviously indian talent indian people are able to meet the demands of the markets in europe and us all those countries right, right. so all these four things have really grown in the last 10 to 12 years right which is one of the reasons why india is a flourishing startup ecosystem i am sure it is going to go grow further definitely right. competition will be there right. competition is in a some way is good right. it keeps you alerted always to see that you do right things at the right time right so that you know we are not out of the business any point of time right thanks sir that startup ecosystem is very congenial very friendly today right. in fact you know people like you and me if you have some surplus we are now willing to experiment with our money right which is a great uh, right. approach sir since you spoke about technology and how do you think technology brought lot of changes in business in terms of msme same time in vistar what's your view on that no, i think the technology was technology is technology is going to be okay. the differentiator okay the reason being many times we think technology can help us to bring in efficiencies okay. it is not true yeah but in the current 
uh, thinking it is also one of the big risk mitigant okay okay and the information which is digitalized mm-hmm. is going to be processed further in different forms to so that you know we can leverage it further further okay so whether you are talking about ai recently okay all the information getting processed in a different manner right right so to the extent that technology is definitely the one big differentiator going forward right any company which is able to digitalize their information and of course digitalize the processes is going to be more successful in the long run right in the process of course they will reduce their cost of delivery okay. also the risk associated with the processes management how vistar took an advantage of this technology as a background then how you could able to scale this business if you can give us little more yeah, no, yeah. i think the uh, as i was saying earlier mm-hmm. uh, vistar started off in 2010 when it was still a physical lot of brick and mortar kind of a company right, to right. start with our ability to invest in technology was limited to start with right but over a period of time we kept investing in technology and okay. digitalized most of the processes starting from sourcing till the customer repays you the loan back right today if you see the entire process are digitalized right that brought in lot of efficiency also of course risk reduction in terms of information asymmetry which otherwise you will see in normal manual processing right mistakes and of course more and more companies in the fintech form are right. entering this space right so we start also have to compete in the same space right. to the extent that uh, we start is well prepared today to right. deliver technology for the future business yes sir what is your opinion on uh, utilizing social media platforms or financial influ- you know, influencers what we call them for utilizing uh, financial sector overall yeah we all agree that social me- media's outreach is now unparalleled right. in terms of how many customers in fact even in rural and semi urban india mm-hmm. the proportion of the smartphone users has significantly has gone up right? right right to the extent that there is an access to social media at every level right. and of course data right. all those right. things are there but how do you really communicate right. and what is the message you give plays a very important role right social media can be used for right purposes right reasons right it also can be misused by the people yeah but as a responsible organization anyone who is looking at social media as means of communication to the customer right should use it very responsibly and what message you give should be true to type right. so that you know people get the right message it is okay to compromise business for a shorter period of time true for the purpose of building a right i would say ecosystem for financial services people want to enjoy today and they want to save less and whatever they have like on a interest level of a person to building a house or building a property it has come down significantly if you look at the data that is one thing then what is your personal view on saving money or spending time I mean spending money uh, today and enjoy your life now i'll give you a story okay. in fact uh, i used to deal with a lot of large corporate clients when i was in a large uh, bank okay i met one of the gujarati businessmen okay the thing which you are saying was people should think of investing in an appreciating asset to start with great okay we should live our life but at the same time i think the message there was where do you really prioritize your investments or cash flows right right now of course younger generation thinks differently right. no doubt they want to enjoy more and because the, they have access to cash much earlier than some of us had had in the earlier stage of the life right but having said that anyone depending upon the cash flow what he gets mm. if he is able to appropriately allocate part of the cash flow for different requirement of the life right including his expenses as well as his savings or asset creation right that is a long term right. in fact one of the beauty of investment is that even if you invest smaller amount for a longer period of time right because of cumulative effect the every your ability to generate wealth or a period of time is so significantly high right people sometimes don't understand that right. they think what can 100 rupees do what can 500 rupees do but that can be a big money spinner right i'm not saying that you should not enjoy to the extent that part of your cash flow monthly right. cash flow what you right. get right allocate it for your personal uh, enjoyment right. it could be travel it could be anything else which you like to do do it but in the process you 
take care of your future as correct. well as your current right i think that is kind of balance is important people need to lead, lead a very comfortable and happy life in the long run right sir now an interesting question because as you know like we are into wealth management right what what really mean wealth to you <clears throat> i think the wealth could be different for different people correct yeah uh, in the indian context if you go and really see hmm. even having a land as an asset right can also be wealth or a gold as an asset right could also be wealth of course bank fds you know traditional uh, wealth pay. creation or wealth right. means of savings right right but nowadays of course the share market right. and the connected products like mutual funds right are becoming popular if globally if you go and see whether it is a western europe or in the us the mutual fund market right. or the share markets have taken right. a significant proportion of what people wealth generation is going right. to contribute to so while india traditionally has been more reliant on gold and land right. as an asset but gradually it is changing right. the proportion of people coming to the market especially investing in mutual funds or investing Liquid. in directly shares is going up very fast especially the current generation educated current generation is taking that route and the right. willingness to take a little bit of extra risk is also coming up right to the extent that for me wealth is something which will help you to take care of any of your exigencies in the future right also create wealth such that your future quality of a life mm-hmm. you are able to significantly enhance it right to the extent that is well but having said that uh, coming from a banking background mm-hmm. i always feel the traditional way of savings in land or in gold is extremely inefficient as a country right we need to move from that to more well managed professionally managed wealth processes like mutual fund yeah. investments yeah. or yeah. share investment directly right so that we are able to contribute back to the company the having a debt investment in land is not going to help right. anyone else right. it is not going to create further value right there is some appreciation but as investing in markets can create further value because money is made available for the people to further grow their businesses right so in this same context like do you feel family <clears throat> has to be involved in the uh, what we can say structuring the financial uh, modeling or wealth creation i mean estate planning do you think family has to be involved in the this process of uh, well savings or in wealth management yeah it depends uh, when i say family family could be father mother versus children or sometimes could be brothers right or sometimes husband versus wife right 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 depending upon the customer who is going to save or invest the money right we need to see is there a requirement to involve the family right but having said that right traditionally indian households are used to joint decision making process right means if there is a money to be saved even if husband is earning it mm-hmm. he normally would like his wife's consent to be taken before he invests right similarly if the children are start earning and they want to save right they would definitely like the majority of the father right and his advice right. in his investment decision right. to be part of it right so i think if you go with that it depends on what family we are talking about right but having said that there are some families where people are educated enough uh, learned enough to take a decision sometimes on their own right we may not need family involvement in such cases but i would say majority of the cases consent of the family getting involved in the whole decision making process is right especially if you are talking about rural and suburban markets sir this basically a personal question you you have sold a multi million dollar business right then you you will be a, like you have been approached by many wealth managers over a period of time you have created a wealth for personal uh, thing then how would you differentiate between the wealth managers this is this this i would like to understand definitely the each one cannot be expert in all the areas right, right. so maybe i might have managed my own business but managing wealth is little different correct right? correct there the one is a trust second the trial court comes in right if you have a wealth manager who is trustworthy where i can rely on him that is one first thing right second also what is the trial record of the wealth manager in terms of managing wealth for somebody else in the right. market and right. what is the reputation right if i am able to combine these two uh-huh. then of course i will go with that kind of person right having said that there right. could be many such 
wealth managers in the market where we right. could have both trust as well as the track record. Right. Obviously, we will not have so much resources to invest. Right. Yeah. Obviously, we will go by the service. Right. How the wealth manager is able to respond to my requirement and how he is able to take care of my requirement right. in a very friendly manner. Right. That makes it better. Of right. course, now is also information time. Means I need to track my investment continuously. Right. Is the platform or is the process of MIS is such that you know, I am able to get a view about my investments and the value mm -hmm. at the right time in the right manner. Mm -hmm. I will maybe use that also as another reason for choosing a wealth manager. In that case, what should be the, the person's approach? Whether it has he has to go with uh, the person or the, whether he has to take with the organization because as you know like organization is just giving you a platform. It is not like they are trying to give you uh, the, the, of course, they will have a couple of interesting, so so call it as interesting products like AIF and all. What should be the approach from the investor point of view? Yeah, no, I think the in general wealth management is more a relationship kind of a yeah. role to yeah. the extent that if there is a wealth manager who is going to continue with you for a long period of time, right. that gives a significant comfort for an investor. Right. But having said that, sometimes it is not possible right. because whichever brand of the wealth manager you go today in the market, mm. the probability is that there will be a change in the wealth managers because front end is something which keeps changing. Right. But the larger organization behind is it some sort of trustworthy and do they have a processes right. to transition the wealth management process from one RM to another RM mm -hmm. in a seamless manner that gives you comfort. Right. Okay. I think that got them. Third thing I think I want to emphasize here. If the wealth manager is working for the organization for which he is working for their benefit or the customer benefit. Understood. In my opinion, a wealth manager is working for only the organization benefit, even though it is a customer's benefit, right. not going to sustain for long. Right. Because at the end of the day, this is a very competitive market and the processes are becoming very transparent. Right. Customers will come to know, I am at a disadvantage of working with one wealth manager because he sold me a product which is more profitable to the bank right. or the NBFC. Right. So obviously his role the approach should be how do I really make customer benefited more right. so the customer sticks to me right. and in the process organization also benefits in the long run. Right. You should look at that kind of approach. So mm. I had a bad experience my own mm. where certain wealth managers try to sell something which is more beneficial to the organization mm -hmm. which led to my loss. Right. Obviously, I will not go back to that wealth manager in the lifetime. Means right. the organization lost that customer for a lifetime. Right. So I would urge that wealth manager's role should be to balance. No doubt he is working for organization. Correct. Organization interest is taken care of it. At the same time, customer benefits. Right. Then it works for long. Right. Sir, you, you understand wealth as a market. If you look at the penetration of the mutual fund or a PMS or an AIF as a category, if you look at the overall market on a listed space basically, so it's just 5 to 10 percent, not beyond that. Like after 75 years of independence, and then the penetration is just 4 to 5 percent in the listed space. What do you think, uh, like how long it you, do you think um, it will increase in India itself? Yeah, I think it's a very important uh, question in terms of how do you really look at this market opportunity. Right. See, India being a very large country, even if small proportion try to invest, market size looks still large. Right. But at the end of the day, that is not going to be sustainable for a long period. Hmm. We need larger proportion of the customers coming and taking the benefit of it. Right. But historically, if you look at it, hmm. wherever there has been a mass market moment of customers from one way of savings or one way of doing some things to other way of doing it. Okay. It is basically the ease of with which they can access such services. Okay. Okay. Just to give you an example, mm -hmm. in the early 2000, when the microfinance sector was growing in India, mm -hmm. they were struggling, struggling to go and convince the customer to take a loan. Okay. Okay. The customers were not willing to take a loan. But it's so tipping point was that sometime to think 2005, 6 customers started realizing that by accessing a loan, I can benefit and I can do my, I can grow my businesses. Right. That is led to the tipping point and the sector has grown phenomenally. Right. Okay. I think it is the same thing here. Okay. We already started seeing some of these early uh, changes in 
investment market right last 4 5 years if you see there are many new fintech players right enter the market and made the investment easy right and simple and easy to understand right so that is one of the reasons why you can see proliferation of investors coming into the platform for fintech right investing into the mutual funds and market right i'm sure there will be more such organizations coming in and penetrating the market and right. creating interest in the minds of the customer right and of course then you have to build a track record the customer has to see that alternative investments versus the investment in the market investment in the market is better right right let's say gold versus land versus this right the day they started realizing it i'm sure this 10% becoming 50% will not be a big uh, i would say problem for india right. it will it will happen because penetration of smartphone being there data being there reach outreach is already there in some form right sir continue to this do don't you think customers are more confused the reason is like you have so many fintech pl- platforms today other than that there are so many other uh, uh, mutual fund options or an investment options for you consider let like, there will be a large cap there will be a multi cap there will be a flexi cap that will be a multiple options in the large cap or a uh, segment itself but changing the name like customers are so confused today and even the wealth managers may not have that so much of clarity the difference between the large cap or a multi cap or a flexi cap the differences actual differences so in that scenario even i feel personally what i feel is customer is like so uh, what we can say confused in terms of investment as well so only thing is like wherever you have a greater margin or the like product managers are able to do a marketing in a better way that is that is also a challenge today if you don't have margin though you you are we are running lot of campaigns like mutual fund is ai all these things are happening i am not denying that but in that context do you feel customer has to like the, the all investment instrument has to be simplified uh, in such a manner that customer can because tier 2 tier 3 is a growing market ideally it has to be simplified so that customer can uh, without having any confusion he can invest that was also there in uh, my i think the again a very important aspect uh, when it comes to investment <coughs> the urban educated customer mm-hmm. definitely is able to access information well and he will to decide where, where to invest right? right when it comes to semi urban rural markets where customers access to information is limited their ability to understand that information is also right. limited right it is the organization or intermediaries which play a very critical role yeah, right. okay as i was saying any organization which takes a customer first kind of an a- approach mm-hmm. is likely to succeed in the long run right because customers in some form will get to know that this organization one is exploiting me and trying to make money out of me right such organizations will be out of the business in few years down the line right organization which say okay i will my f- first approach is to the customer benefits right. so he builds stronger relation with me and remains with me for a long period of time there is that organization right so it's the organization responsibility to filter the information right depending upon the customer whom they are dealing with mm-hmm. feed him with the de- information that where is the opportunity for him to invest what kind of investments could meet his requirement mm. and that will ge- go a long way right and while doing so leveraging the technology and able to package the process in a such a manner right. that the customer is able to access it easily right because you can't have a individual relationship manager managing right. this kind of a customer because right. cost to serve becomes very high right but the technology should deliver that right but the person behind it is he should be able to conceptualize and put in a framework so that you know he is able to access it understood so i will read that sure sir uh, what is your view on index fund uh, currently you know the penetration of india on the index side is hardly um, you can say 13 13.5% if you look at the growth of index fund in india it's been significant if like initially it was only 75000 crore was a market cap in 2016 or so today it is 8 and 1/2 lakh crores being a such a large uh, amc house like sbi is already covered so almost like 3 lakh crores in the index fund itself so how would you uh, rate index fund as a such a confusing uh, market if you look at 
uh, US market today it is at 54 percent yeah while I am not a really an expert in mutual fund industry per se yeah, but yeah. as an investor yeah if I have to look at it I look at it a little differently okay out of total mutual fund investments funds which are being in the in the operating in the market right between large cap multi cap small cap mid cap or kind of thing right my understanding is about 80 85 percent of such funds underperform compared to index fund correct which is an indication that index funds are definitely a better option and sustainable option for an investor to look at it right yeah there could be so few specific firms which could be linked to small cap or mid cap performing higher better than index fund over a period of time right but if 85 percent of them are underperforming for a layman as an investor, right. it makes sense for us to look at index fund as an investment. So, at, you are going to be in the top 15, 18 percent of the uh, investment horizon. Right. That is right. what I will look at. Right. Sir, this is going to be the last question of the day. Sir, if you have to take one cherished point in last 40 years of your career, personal side or a professional side, which movement you would like to take? Yeah, no, I think uh, uh, in the 40 years, there are many such moments which I could think of. Right. It is not easy for me to choose one of them. Right. There are moments like you know moving from bank to ICICI. Right. Definitely was a very cherished moment. I mean, within ICICI, of course, there are multiple things I change over in terms of role. Right. But having said that, the decision to take an entrepreneurial route yeah. in 2010 definitely was something different, more because I was working in a large company in a comfortable role. Right. After working for 25 years, as a, around at the age of 50, senior taking position. a yeah, risk and senior. moving into a startup, right. start on my own, yeah. was definitely was a one challenging one side. Right. But the satisfaction which I got by moving into Start Vistar, right. and of course, running it for 13 years and coming out successfully, right. I think it's unparalleled. Right. I would say that if anyone uh, God has been kind enough to give me that, that kind of an opportunity, go through such journey and come out successfully. And uh, thanks God. Thank yeah. God. Yeah. Very nice. Right. Thank you for so much for your time, sir. Thank it you very much. So, pleasure meeting you. Yeah. Thank you.